No. Are you ready? Okay. I'd like to call the regular council meeting of Tuesday, March 15, 2022, 7 p.m. to order. We'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territories of the Indigenous peoples of the Treaty 7 region and Métis Nation of Valley Region 3. We respect the histories, languages, and culture of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada whose press continues to enrich our community. Okay, item 2.1, March 15th, 2022 minutes, or sorry, agenda. Can I get a motion to adopt the agenda, please? I'll make the motion to adopt the agenda for March 15th, 2022. Is that all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, minutes of March 1st, 2022 regular council meeting, a motion heard. If I can get a motion to adopt the first minutes. All in favor? Aye. Okay, we have delegations here tonight. Item 4.1, 7 p.m. Crossfield Municipal Library, Chairperson Joe Tennant. I see you're all ready to go. <laughs> Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce all of us. To my far right is Brenda Rosvick, who is our treasurer. AJ Raffin is next to me, and she's the vice chair. And Rianne Raymond, to my left, is the uh, library manager. And so thank you for the invitation. You have the PowerPoint and agendas, and I'll just add, each one of us will add a little bit more to it. So just for background information, for decades, the library saved for the possibility and looked for a new location. Uh, we looked at plans for a shared facility, and then when the current location came up in a tax sale, between the funds saved and a successful application for the Canada 150 grant and other funding, we were able to purchase that and move in. So it's exciting after all these years to have such a warm and welcoming location, and staff has spent time obviously settling in, getting to know the building. Uh, planning and growing programs and filling the space. Um, started conversations again with Marigold and ultimately we rejoined them. Marigold provides patrons with access to book systems, books system wide. Rocky View County's per capita funding came back to Crossfield and Marigold has significantly increased our purchasing power, everything from office stationery to IT support. And they also provide training, mentoring, networking, and they're readily accessible when needed and have extensive knowledge in multiple areas of library operations. So before COVID, um, some of the things that were going on, we had a local business uh, hold their monthly meetings upstairs. They contributed to upgrades that they needed and supplied that for the library. Community Links held their programs and as did Community Futures. We've held everything from lunch for small funerals, exercise groups, and the town and the chamber used office as required. There had been a request from a local based business to operate from inside the library that didn't pan out at that time. The request certainly offers possibilities going forward. So pre-COVID, patrons had access to a puzzle table, coffee, couches by a fireplace, and a warm and welcoming place where new and established residents can meet and visit, and local pictures adorn some of the walls which add to the overall ambience. The library team, staff, and board continue to look for grants and funding through the library or the Anger Library Society, which is the fundraising arm for the library. Um, we've, I've heard um, on a board that I sit on that casinos are now starting to be rescheduled, so we're probably out for that fairly quick. But we have book sales, Christmas tree ornaments, and uh, as fundraisers as well, library also applies for FCSS funding from the town in order to expand program offerings. And one of the newest items in the library is our lending library, pardon me, for gardening tools. So when COVID hit, of course, everything shut down, the doors 
patrons could only drop off books that they already had. And we followed the guidelines set up by the province, provincial libraries, Marigold, and of course the town. When the option for curbside arose, uh, we jumped up on that. It was well received. And as regulations were constantly monitored for opportunities to expand our services. And now after COVID, uh, everything's opening back up again. Community links is back. Some of our programs are back. Uh, offices for the town are again occupied. Uh, the local business is looking forward to when they can again have their monthly meetings. And um, so those who have accessed our building in the past and were turned away because of COVID, now we're actively researching them out again. Uh, we're holding programs for all ages, whether they're paint nights, craft nights, birthday parties, and the possibilities are potentially endless. We're engaging in uh, patrons and the public through social media. I'm excited to advise that the library is open again on Saturdays, providing more access and opportunities. And as always, we're open to feedback and suggestions. I'll let um, AJ talk now about the survey that we just completed. Hello. Um, the provincial government requires that libraries submit a plan of service each year with their annual report. The pandemic has made it a bit more challenging to seek input from the community to create our plan. So for 2021, our plan had a very small adjustment in the wording, and that was acceptable to the province. For 2022, we wanted to do the best that we could to connect with the community to gain input and ideas. We reached out to approximately 20 community eight organizations seeking input through survey. Um, from their memberships. The survey was also made available in the September Street event, online from the library, paper version in the library, on the town website, as well as a paper version here in, in town office. Although we would have liked to have a greater response, we were pleased with responses and the suggestions for improvement that we received. So in your package there, you've got the results from the survey for the 2021 goals. Um, and those goals were how we basically measured the success rate. So the survey was structured around those goals for the plan of service for 2021. Surveys were made available for completion between September 2021 and January 2022. The ranking system was a zero to disagree and five for a strong agree opinion. So you can see what um, some of this wording that we got from what do you like best about the library? And that, that was really encouraging. Um, so um, I, I really like the last one. The interlibrary loans have a plethora of options. And truly, um, personally, I've only lived in this town for three and a half years. I saved $4,500 in books cost in that time. So I just know that anything you can dream up, um, you can probably get it. So our opportunities for improvement and next steps come along. So as Joe said, we're open on Saturdays. We're, we're reaching out to have more folks uh, serve in a volunteer capacity. We're trying to increase the awareness of programs and services, and um, and a variety of items for lending have been suggested. You know, indoor games, outdoor games, um, hand tools, play boxes, those sort of things. So we're looking at lifelong learning. So the whole breadth of infant, toddler, all the way to elders in the community. That's who our focus of service is. And tomorrow night we have our board meetings. We will be finalizing the wording for our 2022 goals, and then we'll create smart action plans for the next three years. Thank you. Okay, we'll turn it over to Brent. No, um, I see that all my notes were put in the presentation that you have in front of you. So I really don't have anything to add to that at this time. I would wait for questions, I guess. And AJ? <laughs> so 
so yeah, similarly to Brenda, I think you have most of the information that I have on the programs in your packages there. Um, but you can see that we are to sort of get a breadth and meet different need, different kind of age categories and, and community groups. So currently, um, especially since we've just sort of been able to reopen to adult programming, um, most of the adult programming is planned for later this spring. Um, and some of that is based upon our own survey of what people are looking for, and then to collaborate a little bit with um, the other community groups doing other surveys to just kind of find out what, what programming we want. So we're always, people want, so we're always trying to kind of create new things there. So right now we have preschool programming, that's our story hour every week. Um, and that, yeah, is preschool children and their caregivers. And then we have some school age programs. So two different clubs, Lego club and craft club. And those are also weekly. And then a teen games night, which is bi-weekly. And then we also collaborate with, with Alberta Health Services. So they run their um, immunization clinic. And it's mostly every Friday, every, every so often there's, they skip a Friday. Um, and that's just kind of their thing that's by appointment, but we provide the space for them and kind of work with them to provide what they need. And then, yeah, we're, we have the Community Links Income Tax Clinic coming up and hoping to collaborate with Community Links for Storytime in the park as well for the summer for children um, in connection with our summer reading game. And then we're hoping to do um, some baby programming. Again, some of the things that we weren't able to do over the pandemic, we're hoping to bring back now, um, along with some adult programming and more family programming, especially now that we're able to be open Saturdays. And yeah, then kind of that last closing note is just our commitment to continuing to listen to the community and kind of provide whatever we can and meet whatever needs we're able to. Hey, um, I guess if you have questions, you can Fire away. Excellent. Thanks for your presentation and really good information in uh, our package. I appreciate that. So libraries just aren't libraries anymore. <laughs> right. And I think that's the message. Um, you guys are filling some gaps in the community and uh, you should be really proud of that. I'm glad you're working with uh, other organizations like Community Links to provide some programming as well and providing space for them. That's always a good partnership. Um, I'm going to open up the floor to questions and then I might have a couple of questions after council is done. So yeah. anybody have questions? Through the chair. Councillor Knight. Just want to thank you ladies for coming in tonight. The proposal is really good. My family loves the library. It's the staff. It's a really great place. Actually, it's fantastic. The uplift of that building is quite good. Uh, reviewing the information you provided in the package, it touches on fundraisers that met with minimal success. And this maybe isn't like a, this would maybe more be something of a recommendation or some way that could possibly work with the town. But I've never really seen a library ever take on something like maybe a golf tournament or a Halloween cabaret or pick it here, bingos or crib tournaments or anything that might involve the hall. It might be something that I think, I think our men staff would be welcome to probably partner together to get some funding to these. Because I think we're going to see more and more government funding being pulled back. So we're going to have to find better ways to, generate additional income. And I think if we get the town involved in some things, we found it with the street stuff when we had the opening of the main street here. I think people are starting to come together and they'll come out to more of these events. So that might be something to look forward to for try to find new fundraisers going forward. And, and I think uh, speaking to that in the past, it was a shortage of volunteers, but certainly the more groups that we can get involved in it, I think the better chance that we're going to have to have a big event that is really substantial as far as fundraising goes. So for sure, thank you. Because yeah, I think the Elks is one of the groups that would probably help. There, there's multiple groups in town that probably would. It's just a matter of coming up with a plan, coming up with right. an idea and executing it early. Yeah, and, and I agree with that statement. I think there's some good fundraisers out there where you can make some good money. Right. Volunteers are mm -hmm. um, hard to come by sometimes because yep. you see them like yourself and many of you on more than one board or more than one organization. Right. Um, I think how our administration really can help is not really organizing it for you, but coaching you on right. maybe what will work and giving you some tools that can help you um, do a successful fundraiser. Sounds great. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. Any other questions? Through the chair. <laughs> Deputy Mayor. Ladies, thanks again for coming tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, 
One thing, uh, and I totally agree with Councillor Knight's uh, mm -hmm. thoughts on being able to work together. We're all, you know, we're all in this together. Yeah. And if and if we're able to, the only way we're going to able to help our community is we all work together. Um, and I think I would go beyond that and, and say that, you know, I would encourage, uh, you know, reaching out to the administration and I'm not speaking for the administration, uh, you know, only as council, but uh, that they have maybe some more resources that are available um, and, you know, not trying to give them any more work, but because I know they, they've got lots on their plates, but certainly with uh, when we're doing needs assessments, you know, maybe we can somehow piggyback on that. Uh, and I know exactly, you know exactly what I mean about yeah. that. So I did have two questions and uh, how would you like them? Do you, do you want me to, to ask the first one and then the second or just both? And then you guys both answer them. Sure. Okay. Uh, my first question is, uh, it's more of a comment, but, uh, and then there's a question behind it, but I'm glad to see that there's more utilization than just the books mm -hmm. and, and being able to utilize the spaces for, for revenue uh, to help grow and fund, fund the library. Uh, my question is, is do you guys advertise for that space and uh, how do you manage that bookings? I guess, you know, it, and this is more for people in the community sure. to see uh, right now, like if they're watching tonight. So, well, in, in the past, uh, because we didn't really have a lot of time to to book out those rooms and we were trying to decide, you know, how much do we rent them out for that kind of thing. So it, it was pretty preliminary at the beginning. And at that time, there were two offices that were used for the town. So then we just really had the program room and we had one room kind of a storage and then the boardroom. So we didn't have a lot available um, as that now the town has the one office. So now we kind of have two offices in the boardroom. Um, if anybody phones, we certainly have that information available. Um, I don't know that we particularly advertise it a lot because we can, with community links there and the town office staff that needs to be there, uh, it's somewhat hit and miss, but it's certainly something we can promote now that we're fully open again and kind of figure out who's coming when and then get some prices. The one that does their monthly meetings there, um, they needed something over and above what was in that programs room. And so they offered to do the upgrade, which they did do. Um, so they'll be coming back. Uh, they're, they're a group that does you know pay rent on it um as far as community links and and the health clinic that's at no cost so i mean we could rent those rooms out but i know when community links used to meet here um it was uncomfortable for some of the people because if you weren't at the front desk paying your water bill mm -hmm. then you were here for community links and so when the library became available and there was space there that was a really easy and comfortable fit for people because you could be parked downtown nobody knows why you're down oh, there absolutely, right? yeah. so so that was a really good fit and and whichever way we go like if there's more of those groups i think the crossfield wellness group was talking meeting there as well um it's another good fit but that is also not necessarily a money maker so but you know and certainly um a variety of that would be available and it would be booked through the library uh, by calling them so, okay yeah and okay. that information the pricing information is all uh, you were just Absolutely, I get that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the okay, perfect. And my second question, sorry, uh, your sur surveys are done yearly. Yes. Okay. And, and then, uh, so so I guess I have two parts of the question. Uh, how do you create the content for the survey, and uh, do you get any external help for the content and implementation of the survey? Okay, so if I can back up a little bit. This is one survey that we've done. We haven't done a survey for a few years. So my, I, I'm yeah. sorry, I answered before I heard your full question. Yeah, every three yeah. years is a survey. This time, because we were kind of coming out of the pandemic and everything else, we didn't reach out externally for any guidance. We just kind of had specific questions we were looking for answers on. Um, you know, next survey, I'm sure that it'll it'll look different. Um, 
Another board that I sit on, we hired somebody who used to do that for a job, like that was their career, they've just retired. Um, certainly the way that survey was built was, was very valuable to know for this board going forward, so. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You can let Lori Jacob take know that I think she should be paying a little something to the library. <laughs> I'll tell her you said. <laughs> yeah, tell, tell her I said that. <laughs> They do help and provide good programming. So, mm -hmm. any other questions? No, I might have covered <laughs> through the chair. I don't really have no. a question. I just have a comment. Um, one of the first, first places I went when I moved to Crossfield was to the library, and I find it very welcoming. The staff was very welcoming, and uh, I wish I had more time to spend there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I, I have uh, a couple of questions um, and I don't know if you guys know this, but um, does the Marigold base their um, invoice and cost back to us um, on the census? They use the provincial census and that is a couple of years old. Right, so it's not exactly accurate. No. Yeah, okay provincial census. And do you think that um, what we're currently paying the Mary Gold for the services is um, we're getting good value? I do. Um, now at the end of each year, Mary Gold uh, does a printout um, and, and basically breaks down the services that they've provided to the library based on what we've, we've paid. Mm -hmm. And when you take a look at that, I find that pretty fascinating because um, even just the IT support, uh, you know, if you had to hire an IT company in to provide that support, that's huge. And their buying power is something that you just can't yeah. argue with, you know, like as, as a library on its own. And I mean, historically, we were with Marigold that the first time it didn't go as well as it is going this time. So we withdrew. But now, uh, I mean, it's it's something that people ask for uh, the access to books uh, and then and just the extra power they give us with buying with even just um, paper and, you know, everything else for the office, as well as the IT. I do think we get good value for, for what we pay. Excellent. Yes. Just, just off your cuff, like, um, what in total do between you and the town, what do we pay them? Okay. Okay. Yeah. There's also that one, um, there's kind of that overview little graphic in the package that you have there. Yeah. Um, and you can see that it says, um, yeah, I, I saw it. I just couldn't find the page yeah. while I was sitting here. <laughs> but like, for example, there's um, uh, there was three thousand nine hundred fifty five content, which is another big thing because when you pay for those services, it's very expensive. Yeah. And so, so Marigold is kind of fairly consistently adding. Like they just had the new uh, e-resource for. Uh, which again, really expensive resource that they can buy. Right, so they're like superstore, not the big way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Buying power. I get it. Okay, my final question for you is um, we, you received $3,168 from the county. Mm -hmm. What is that based on? Per How capita. Per, it's per capita. Yeah. Okay. And prior to being uh, belonging to Marigold, that per capita was then divided between Airdrie, uh, Cochrane, Bicycle, Iricana, and, and it was spread out because they will only support uh, and pay per capita if you belong to Marigold. Okay. Um, and again, they use the provincial um, census for the cap per capita. Yeah. Okay. That's all I had. So 
Um, do you guys have any comments? No, nope, just thank you for the opportunity to present. Um, thanks for hearing us out. We love our new library. Well, we certainly appreciate all the hard work you and your group do and the programs that you provide. There's so many people in town that really need the library and that service and all the services that you host there. So thank you very much. And, and I think it's a great place for new people to come and meet yeah. other people. Uh, it's not like having to pay for a meal at a restaurant and hope you meet somebody. And, you know, whether that's doable or not doable, I think it just has space and and. Um, warmth and welcoming for everybody so it's great so you're also a dating service <laughs> a dating service <laughs> maybe something to look into <laughs> I, I have no comment i have no response to that councillor bang's ears perked up a little bit there <laughs> thanks again everyone thank you thank you Okay, and we have a second presentation tonight. Um, Rodeo Society, James Rowan. And James, uh, I don't know if your partner wants to come up as well, if you can uh, just introduce him. Thank you. All right. Uh, the Mayor Council, my name's James Rowan. This is Ian Leesk, a senior member of the Rodeo Society. We're here to talk to you about the uh, renovations and improvements that have been going on at the Rodeo Rounds the last few years. Um, I've submitted the uh, uh, report to you guys. Hopefully you have it with all the pictures. Um, to give you some background, um, P Night Day started in 1977. Uh, the Rodeo Society and the Rodeo Grounds in their current location were created in 1984. And uh, the Rodeo Society has been maintaining the property on their own since uh, 1999. Uh, I've been told that the location of the property is not in an ideal location. So there's always been talk about relocating and moving. And because of that, it's kind of hampered the uh, maintenance and the commitment of uh, the, the town towards renovations and developing of the property. Uh, but it's gotten to a point where the, um, the property, like we can't wait anymore, the renovations need to be done. And so that's the point where we're at now where I joined the board four years ago, and I've been uh, applying for grants and getting donations uh, to do the uh, to start the renovations. Um, so to start with the renovations, I acquired uh, $8,000 from uh, corporations. Co-op Viterra, Shell, and Keltar. Uh, we received eight thousand dollars in grants from the Crossfield and District Recreation Board over the last couple of years. Uh, I've uh, we've gotten about sixty-five thousand dollars worth of products uh, as donations from companies. These include two portable office buildings, new power poles from Fortis, um, and Arcton Steel has given us new metal cladding on one side of the main building. And that was all donated. Uh, the picture there, if you're looking at pictures, there's a picture of the power poles. You can see the uh, old ones versus the new ones. They're, the height difference is like, they're substantially bigger power poles. <laughs> and they're good for a long time. So we won't have to worry about power for a long time. Uh, the improvements and maintenance that we've done, uh, bleachers was our top priority. I created a bleacher master plan that has all the sizes and all the boards um, right down to the bolts that we need to replace things. Uh, we've started uh, replacing some of, the, uh, some of them already. I've done 60 boards so far. And when the boards were off, we've repainted the, uh, the uh, metal supports. So I had, had help from high school grads and volunteers doing that. Uh, we've uh, started replacing the platforms behind the chutes, uh, um, adding an extra bracket, making them uh, extra strong and making them wider so they're more safe. Um, the front office, we've added window, door, electrical, paint, steps. We've applied 40 liters of paint. Uh, red is our uh, primary color. That's the color of the rodeo. So when you see red on the rodeo grounds, that's for the rodeo. Um, we've mowed the lawn. We've edged the entire arena to prepare it for painting. Um, picked up cigarette butts, hundreds of them. And we've filled about 150 gopher holes, 
after the gophers were moved out. Um, Short-term renovations are plans for this year. Uh, we're, um, I've applied for grants. Uh, it, everything is dependent on grants, of course. Uh, we'd like to uh, continue to replace the siding on the main building. Another wall siding every year is kind of what I'm aiming for. Uh, we're doing electrical upgrades, hooking up the two portable buildings and some other minor plugs and uh, things like that. Replace more bleacher boards and apply as much paint as we can. We have another 40 liters to put on this summer. Medium term renovations. Uh, we like to finish replacing the siding of the main building. Uh, there's siding on one of the portable buildings that needs to be changed. I'd like to trench the water line so that it doesn't freeze anymore because that's an ongoing issue. Uh, we always have to get the town to come out to fix leaks and we'd like to be more in independent. Yeah. Um, continue fixing the bleachers, uh, spreading some soil along the fence line. We share the property line with the uh, bike trail. So sometimes we have dogs coming in and uh, sheep escaping. So we like to fix that. Um, I'd like to get a riding mower so we can start maintaining the lawn. Long term solution uh, renovations, uh, perhaps a new announcer's booth, uh, road gravel, a roof structure over the grandstands, perhaps some light poles around the main building so uh, community groups don't have to rent the uh, light, uh, light poles anymore, the portable ones. Um, and I'd like to remove the tent structure and uh, replace it with a proper steel building eventually, long term. Um, event ideas, we've um, started working with the town for drive-in movies. Uh, as the renovations to the property um, go along, we'd like to start encouraging more community groups to do more events. Uh, we've discussed the idea of uh, establishing uh, fees and the fees collected will go to facility improvements with a percentage going to nonprofit initiatives. Um, such as the Legion and food banks and uh, the fire department's food hampers. Um, that's the report. Uh, I'd like to point out that uh, all the renovations, we're trying to do it without the assistance of, of uh, taxpayer money. We are trying to do it all on our own with uh, raising our mo the money on our own and applying for grants and donations. Uh, so we're trying to be little expense and little inconvenience to the town as possible. And there's still lots of work to be done. It'll take a couple more years. Um, and I hope you like it. That's a really good information, James. I mean, you always have uh, are very thorough in anything you do. So thank you for that. I'll open up the floor to questions if anybody has any questions. Through the chair. Deputy Mayor. Uh, hey, James. Hi. Um, I, I'm glad that there's a lot of improvements are happening for, for this uh, <clears throat> facility. Um, one thing I have, I, I guess a comment, and, and I don't want to make it sound the wrong way, but you know, we're not asking about taxpayers' money, but grants are coming from taxpayers. That's where money comes from. Yep. Uh, uh, the money has to come from somewhere. So whether it comes from grants or, you know, fundraisers, are you guys going to do any other fundraisers to help or try to do the improvements throughout the year? Is there any plan for, for more fundraisers throughout the year? We have a couple of ideas, but nothing definite. Okay. I wanted to focus on donations from uh, corporate donations from corporations that have operations in Crossfield, mm -hmm. but who would traditionally not donate to the rodeo society. Um, I want, like, I could easily go up and down the street, and I'm sure I'll, there'd be dozens of businesses that would like to help us out, but I want them to contribute their funds to the actual events and not to take away from that. So I'm trying to get corporations that would not normally donate to us gotcha. to fund for it. Yeah, I, I know it's always hard to get, uh, um, you know, corporate donations all the time. You know, everybody's looking at all their, but if, if you know, if you offer, for like like a fundraiser, a 50-50 or a, you know um, something tangible uh, that they can you know if they're you're fundraising towards. So um, 
you know, I guess maybe that would be a suggestion of mine is, is look into more fundraising for, for paying for, you know, the new signing or fixing the roofs or, you know, adding whatever fixing, you know, the landscape. You know that that would be my only suggestion is looking to more fundraising than uh, just donations because it you know you ask every and, and I know this firsthand is you, you always ask and you, you know um, sometimes the well dries up there and and I know you're you're looking at different um, you know companies to to, to look to do, donate but always you know fundraising is a great avenue to uh, so sounds good. Okay, thanks. That's all I had. To the chair. Councilor Knight. Uh, I really like the Pete Knight rodeo days. I love the rodeo. I run the parade when I was four years old because my family's tied to this, so I'm pretty pumped about this still being around the town. Uh, I do think it adds a severely great value to our town from the parade to the button bust and to all the rest. Uh, I do know that in the past, you guys have had a few other rodeos. Do we think that there's going to be any successfulness of bringing back like the, I do believe you had two or three other rodeos, one that followed the main one, and then you had one in the fall again too. Is there any chances of those coming back? You're referring to the women's rodeo? Yeah. The ladies rodeo? They never generated income. They always okay. Crowds, and they do not promote that event. Any money put out is in it's a lot of people. Okay. Uh, I would like to see them come back. We would have to find something for really good here this year. I would bring people to this town with less than three hundred Do we think it's realistic that you'd have something else like a I know girls have a bowler riding right there. I know that Bull Riders Canada is bull riding. Is it plausible to have another function in the facility just to help you guys with revenue for the year? Um, for ourselves, we need self-directed self-directed. Uh, we're an outdoor facility in any event that we are like us. The bull program is fine. Uh, with our volunteers, we put our energy in one at the end of one. We're pretty well burned out of it. If anyone else were to do it, it would be more likely to sign it over to the higher of someone else to create something. For us to do it, uh, we'd be squeezing the pretty hard. Last question I got uh, for you both is Are you guys currently working on ways to actually generate new volunteers or new people to join the board? Because I know it's been the same people year after year after year. And I know it's tough. We talk about this all the time, trying to find new people, but we do have new people moving back to the town. Is Are you guys working in any way, possibly getting the information out? to the community that there is a rodeo board to join on there and actually get out there and help volunteer? Um, I'm not sure if we're actually actively... Well, yeah, we're receptive to... The and sponsorship. And the AGM. And we've acquired... Uh, we've got new members on, uh, on the board already for the last couple of years. I've been on for four years, but there's been new members that have joined since I've been on. I've been on for 27 each year we seem to lose one or two. Each year we seem to lose one or two. More through word of mouth than uh, being specialized as we can. It's healthy to have people. Okay. So there'll be no need, like I was more maybe thinking possible if we can use maybe some of the town's social media side to help you generate more members or you guys kind of happy with the number of members having to put this on uh we can always use extra help and the more help we get uh we can have more events it's like uh, like i have dreams of having like car shows and haunted houses and all sorts of things there but uh it just takes the volunteers to do it too would that be possible cao sue yes.
Sorry. Would it be possible for the town to put out a bit of a blurb on one of our next social media things that the, ro the Rodeo Society is possible looking for some new people to help out with the... Absolutely, we could do that. Excellent, thank you. I think, James, if you could send um, the wording that you need to Lindsay, um, then we will be able to help you with what your needs are. And just a tip, and maybe you already know this, so tell me to shut up if you do, but when you're asking for volunteers, be very specific as to what type of volunteers you need and get the talent that you need. Otherwise, you're just going to get a warm body. Yeah. Right. yeah. So okay. if you have job descriptions yep. that you can put in there, like what the posi position is, what the details are, what they're going to do, that would help out in attracting um, volunteers and how many hours it's going to take. Is it day of? Is it a board member? Is it a project member? And what the time commitment is. All right. Sounds good. If that makes sense. For now, we're just looking for people to paint. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> if anybody then has that high there. kids that need something to do this summer, let me know. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so I had a couple of questions. James, you had mentioned that, um, you know, the rodeo grounds isn't the ideal location. Can you just tell me a little more about that? You know, why is it the right location? Is it not the right location for you guys? And where and where do you guys want to be? Um, I think ideally we would like to be along the 2A to get some uh, visual, like uh, visual representation. People driving by, they can see an event going on and stop by. We've asked the farmer's market to relocate to the rodeo grounds because I think that would be a, a good spot for it. There's lots of room to spread out but uh, they don't want to move because uh, they're scared that people won't be able to find it, uh, particularly, particularly new residents. Um, the terrain has been a problem, uh, like just hills and stuff. It's not, as, uh, I think, a, a level ground would be a, <laughs> more appropriate for rodeo. Um, and there are other uh, issues with the property. With what, sorry? With the property, just the long-term issues. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, have, has the cross rodeo looked anywhere or taken a proactive approach yet? Um, I think we've been waiting for town. I guess my big question there is whose responsibility do you think would be for an organization to obtain land? Would it be the organizations or would it be the municipalities? Uh, In the last agreement, town yeah. My experience on the board, which we teach three times, was, was determined to sell the property and for various reasons, deal boundary. We are a bit short of parking. Where we would go on our own, we couldn't We're committed to being there. Okay. There, facilities, structure. It functions well for what we need. Space wide. Yeah. And then I think that, you know, on the parking um, issue too, there are larger events that. Just use busing. No parking on site. Let's bus you in. The only ones that are allowed on are, you know, the rodeo cowboys, the stock trailers, all of those types of things. So there's always uh, that if you can slowly, yeah, yeah, implement some of that. Okay. Overall, um, what grants have you applied for to date? Have, have they been like through the Albert, province of Alberta? Yeah. Yeah. So the CFA. Uh, Community not, facilities enhancement? No, we can't apply for that one because we don't have a contract long enough to apply for it. Actually, that's not entirely true. Oh? <laughs> you can apply for that and not have a five-year lease. Okay. Um, there's a couple ways you can go about it. You can partner with the town for that application and apply on behalf of the town, and then we would be uh, um, look after the money portion. Okay. Um, and we can do it that way, or um, you can get a letter that you are in a lease within the town. It doesn't have to have the five-year term. Okay. Yeah. We and still have to come up with our matching side. You would still have to come up with the matching side, yes. Yeah. yeah. That's an issue too. <laughs> but, but you can. And they also have a, an operating grant through CIP with the yeah. Alberta government that you may be eligible for as well. So that might even be worth looking into. Yeah, okay. 
Okay. And we've applied for, uh, uh, we've received uh, another, um, I can't remember what it's called, it's the rodeo grant from uh, COVID relief. So we've, we've received that as well. Yeah, excellent. So, uh, and I also noticed that, you know, um, in here, you wanted to put some rental costs uh, towards, you know, hampers in the food bank and scholarships and whatnot. Um, this is my personal opinion, maybe not the town's opinion. So I'm just going to say I'm not sure that using public lands to give donations back like that would be the ideal thing. I think that if you accepted food donations at the rodeo and gave those back, that might be a more suitable way of doing it than actually giving them a money donation back uh, and using those rentals for more renovations for what you need them for. Um, personally, that's how I would probably go about it. Okay. Just a thought. And um, just a little thought on donations versus sponsorship. There's a big difference. Um, if you go asking for donations, that's a donation. There's no strings attached. Yeah. So sponsorships, you go ask for a sponsorship. You have to give something in return. Okay. Yeah. So just careful. I don't know if you're asking for donations or if you're asking for sponsorships. Or both. Both. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Excellent. Really happy. 45th anniversary. Your event on Saturday was amazing. And I'm really proud to have the rodeo here for 45 years. And I'm hoping to have you here for longer. So okay. thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to ask Council just for a motion to accept both the delegations uh, for information. I'll make that motion to accept the information from both delegations. All in favor? Uh, aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Item 5.1, uh, financial update. Good evening, Mayor, <coughs> Council. Um, the check listing for accounts payable total of 384,000, an odd change. It was an increase from January of 145,000. Um, most of it was due to one-time funding for the year, i.e. the Crossfield and District Recreation Board was 30,000. Marigold was 22,000. Um, we had some remaining costs to professional excavators for Railway Street, as well as paying back a partial hold payment. Um, and the total of there's there's about eight of them that are one time payments um, make up 88 percent of that increase. Any questions for Lori? Through the chair. Deputy Mayor. Lori, uh, I, I just have a question and I'm glad you brought it up about professional excavators. So the 33K was the holdback? There was a portion of it was a holdback payment. So railway was for 17,000 and a partial holdback release on Vista was 12,000 and change. Okay, so the, the Vista one was the- A partial holdback on the- On the, on the rink, right? Yes. Okay, just- I We just, still have a little bit of a holdback remaining. Okay, do you, do you know how much and that, that's gonna be? It's that's the, okay. I think it's around 5,000. Off the top of my head, I can't. And we'll, we'll see that next, the, the, uh, at next month, or, or how, when's the, the next holdback payment? Depends on when all the, the um, arrears and everything that they have to do to. to oh, okay, fair enough. Perfect. That's all okay. I, uh, I think that's all I had. Any other questions for Lori? Oh, can I get a motion to accept Lori's report for information? Deputy Mayor. I'll make that motion to accept the financial. Um, as uh, presented. All in favor? Uh, Item 6.2, Council part Participation in Surrounding Community Parades. You missed uh, 6.1. Sorry, I did. I crossed it off too soon. Sorry, Meryl. That's okay. Assessment Services Agreement, Director of Operations, Meryl Jarvis. Thank you, Mayor. Harris and good evening council. So before you is a report uh, request to renew assessment services for the town. So as you can see, we've provided a timeline under the background and you'll see that we've been working with um, Wild Rose Assessment since 2011. 
Uh, last year, we asked council for a motion to renew the assessor contract for a further one year period and mayor tenant of the day did make that motion with um, a request that uh, request for a proposal be prepared for the 2022 assessment year. And um, the current agreement with Wild Rose assessment is set to expire at the end of this month. Um, although the 2021 motion of council was to prepare a request for a proposal this year, the CAO, which is Sue Keenan, does have the authority to renew a current contract when there are no rate increases and good services have been provided. Administration is pleased with the services provided by Wild Rose assessments and note that there are no rate increases for the four years outlined within the attached letter. A uh, list of community service by Wild Rose assessment can be viewed on the link provided within this report. So the options before council, uh, there's three options. One being that administration be authorized to enter into an agreement with Wild Rose assessments for a further four year period at the current contract price of $23 per parcel plus GST. The section, second option would be that administration be authorized to enter into an agreement with Wild Rose assessment for a one year period at the current contract price of $23 per parcel plus GST and that a request for a proposal be prepared for 2024 assessment year or that council not authorize administration to enter into an agreement with Wild Rose assessment for a four year period and that a request for a proposal be prepared for the 2024 assessment year. And administration's recommendation would be option one that we enter into an agreement with Wild Rose assessment for a further, further four year period at the current contract price of $23 per parcel plus GST. Thank you, Meryl. Um, I have uh, just one question. My understanding is that we're happy with Wild Rose and they provided a good job in, in a timely manner. So overall, we're, we're happy with them. My question is, have we done any benchmarking uh, to see if that $23 per parcel is um, at market rate? Are we getting a good price? Um, what I do know is that the rate is comparative. Um, it hasn't changed for the last three years for Crossfield. I can't speak for other communities, but it hasn't changed for Crossfield. And moving forward, we're entering into the same agreement. So that price hasn't changed. It doesn't change. It's for set for four years. Questions from council? Through the chair. Deputy Mayor. Uh, my question actually is along the lines of the mayor here. Uh, and, and it has nothing to do with, you know, how much it costs, but are we getting good value for the services that they are providing? And that is between Marilyn and yourself, Sue, your opinions. Uh, are we getting good value for the services that uh, Wild Rose is providing us? Um, I've had an opportunity to meet with Wild Rose um, and we had quite an extensive conversation. I would say not only are we getting superb service, we're also getting a very good rate. Okay. Uh, I, 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 actually, I'm, I'm just going to continue on, on Sue's train of thought there. In your previous role um, in for McLeod, uh, would you say that... Um, Wild Rose is, is as good or what you've seen down in Fort McLeod? I would say um, they're pretty comparable. I was always impressed with who we had down in Fort McLeod. Okay. Um, but the, um, these, Kevin has been great and he's very transparent. Uh, he's prepared to provide any details uh, that we want. <coughs> um, so I'd say it's very comparable, yes. Okay. Um, any, any other Additions, Meryl? Yeah, I would just add to that that um, we've always found Wild Rose assessment really available to um, address any ratepayer concerns that have been had in the past. They're very accessible. Okay. Yeah, that, that was actually kind of, I'm just going to that too. So, mm -hmm. okay. Thanks, Meryl. You're welcome. Thank you. Do, do we get many um, challenges to the assessments or do they come back with some pretty reasonable? Uh, assessments? There are times that people um, aren't satisfied with their assessment. And um, so we always direct them to Wild Rose, but we really haven't had many challenges in the past couple of years. Yeah, I, I, I imagine we, that we, it's uh, dealt with really, really well, but that's the answer I wanted was we haven't had many challenges. Yes. Okay, great. I have no further questions. 
And if not, um, can I get a motion from council? I'll make the motion that uh, administration be authorized to enter into a new agreement. And Mural said four years. My paperwork says five. So does mine. So does mine. So does mine. <laughs> Sorry. The letter from Did Walter four? says four. And our says paperwork four. says five. It's four years. Okay. Thank you. Is that a question years. mark or is it? Four no, years. it's four years. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about the confusion. For a further four-year period at the current contact contract price of $23 per part. So yes. Excellent. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks, Merrill. No Mayor, if I may. Do we need a, a motion to update the minutes to reflect that as well? Uh, Our Lindsay? agenda. These yeah. are minutes. These are just a report. She just she made the motion. With oh, it's not. It's, sorry. It my apologies. It wasn't in the. Okay. My apologies. It was just part of the agenda package. Yeah. Uh, now, when they get posted, uh, sorry, when they get posted on the website, do the does the package get uh, attached? The package is always sent out after the agenda is sent to council. Yes. The package that you guys have is the same one council that the public got. Okay, so I guess that's just an update. Oh, so the, just, the update will come with the motion. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay, so now we're on item 6.2. Uh, council participation is surrounding community rates. And I imagine, um, Lindsay, is that, are you giving us an update? Um. <laughs> Just wondering if council, those are the two uh, parades we've had interest in. I'm um, just wondering if there's any members of council that would like to participate. Um, I'm assuming that council is going to be participating in our parade on uh, June. Um, and then we have an invite uh, from the Didsbury Elks uh, for their parade in, on August 20th. So if there's anybody available to attend those, just let me know. And then we can ensure that we have vehicles and uh, that stuff. So if you guys can let me know when you know your schedules, that would be great. I would say definitely June 10th for Pete Night Days. Um, that we should, that's a must. And we should be attending that one. And uh, for August 20th for the Disbury Elks Parade, um, when's the drop dead deadline that we need to know? I believe it is the week before, whatever that date is. Okay. okay. And so if you can send that email out that date, Lindsay, on the August 20th um, parade in Didsbury. And if we get the majority of council that wants to go, then I think we should do it. Okay. If we don't get majority, then I, I don't think we should do it. Okay. If that makes sense to everyone. Mm -hmm. okay. Are we doing one this year? Oh. No. And Lindsay, do you just want a motion for information on that one for now? Yes, please. Excellent. Can I get a motion on item 6.2 on the parades for information to accept it for information? So moved. All in favor? Aye. The motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Councilor's business. <clears throat> I had the opportunity to uh, attend the rodeo dinner and auction on Saturday. I think it went very well. There was great attendance. I think the auction went well. Um, they definitely some went for a very good price. So I'm really looking forward to the rodeo this year, attending and uh, having some fun out there. It sounds like they have some great bands too for the Friday and Saturday night. So it would be a toss up on which night I go to, unless it's both. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, second to that, I uh, had myself uh, central mayor's meeting today. Then we did discuss the fire department and AHS and the medical calls that we go on. And that really piqued the interest of um, the central mayors down the corridor here. And they wanted everybody to bring back more information from their towns. And uh, they may be making this an issue at Alberta municipalities. 
uh, moving forward, which I think is great for us. So the two things that they want everybody to bring back is uh, what are the costs um, for the medical calls in total? and uh, the number of calls for medical services. And Russ, I believe we have some of that information already. I think um, if you don't mind, if you can send me an email, just breaking down, um, not quite the full report that uh, Ben did, but the breakdown of medical calls that we do, and then add a cost if we were to go, to, when we go to all those calls, if we were to um, invoice them back, what would that total cost be? If I may ask a quick question, just for clarity. <clears throat> uh, is there a time frame that you're looking for for that? Um, like for 2020, 2021? No, sorry, like uh, oh. like for the year 2021 or uh, to I date? I think that over the past three years, just like. Past three years? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. If it's not too much trouble. Excellent. So that was one of our topics. So we did talk about uh, Marigold a little bit. Um, some of us are part of Marigold, some of us are part of Parkland. Um, some use the federal census, some use the provincial census, and uh, the numbers just aren't accurate. And so how they do their numbers and request funding from municipalities is different and depending on which system you're, you're with. Our Marigold one seems to be a, a little bit more fair than what the Parkland is uh, charging. So We'll just remain quiet on that one and, and be happy with that. <laughs> um, municipalities are going through their strategic planning. Um, and they did talk a little bit about the, the most recent Alberta municipalities meeting. I guess there's a lot of decisions, meaning a lot of things happening. So I'm looking forward to that email from Alberta municipalities when it comes out. And that's it for me. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. A uh, couple of things that I've been working on. Uh, I just want to talk about the Rockview Foundation. I, you know, and I can't stress enough how I uh, enjoy being on that board. <clears throat> it's it's a great uh, um, great board to be on. Um, very enlightening. A uh, couple of things. Uh, the strategic planning session, very similar to what we enjoy just going through um, with the uh, with the town here. Uh, we use Bespoke um, uh, Nonprofit Solutions for, for helping us uh, navigate through our strategic planning. And then uh, after, that was our first section. We have another our session. We have another one coming up here. Um, I believe it's at the end of the month. Um, as well, we had a, a board meeting following uh, our first session, uh, just the typical organization stuff. We are um, uh, going through a bit of um, staffing. Um, I wouldn't say issues, but we're we're losing some management, uh, and uh, certainly those are some some big spots to to fill uh, uh, on the foundation. Um, as well, on March the eleventh, I did a. <clears throat> Uh, uh, quite a neat Zoom call with about 150 or 170 other uh, different housing uh, body um, people, uh, whether they were board members, uh, CAOs, uh, directors uh, on different housing boards throughout Alberta. And uh, they had been talking about the, the provincial government is implementing uh, board competencies uh, especially for housing, um, these housing foundations, whether it's um, uh, seniors or um, low, low income, and uh, qu quite a, quite a few things came out of that. Um, and, and I guess to be very short, I I understand how how it is important to uh, for all of us on all of our boards that you know we are competent and and the reason why we're on these boards is uh, to to be the voice of our residents that are um, whether it's the rec board or the uh, you know you know any other boards that we sit on and and um, making sure that that the right people are in the right seats so 
Anyways, I uh, just wanted to uh, to talk about competency and, and how how important when we're br bringing back the information from our boards, uh, how important that is to to give back to the residents here and, and let them know we are we are certainly looking out for their best interest on these boards. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kernelson. Uh, the only thing new I have is I did a Zoom meeting last night with Rob Parks for our social needs assessment. It was a great meeting and I just do want to put it out there that when we are doing the surveys or any open houses, we really need our residents to attend those. We need their feedback before we can make decisions on what the needs are and what they want. And to follow up on that, um, March 28th, I have a meeting with the rec board. That's all for me. Delta Knight. I as well attend the RC Strategies meeting Monday the 14th with Rob, stakeholder social needs assessment with also your worship, which was a pleasure for a Monday morning one hour. It was nice. That was great. <laughs> uh, it was really good. It's quite interesting to see. You could have brought me breakfast. Next time. Uh, quite interesting to see how they are really pushing forward to make our community better. So that's quite exciting. Mm -hmm. Councilor Lamb. I have nothing to report. Councilor Van. I have nothing new to report. All right. And I will add that the RC strategies meeting that we had Mm -hmm. was very good they followed their follow-up questions were really good and they really got down to you know asking us why yeah uh we made those statements and to give them further information so really good i'm glad we picked them mm -hmm. yeah excellent uh can i get a motion to accept uh council updates for information i'll make that motion Councilor Knight, all in favor Aye. Carried. Administrative update. Sue Keenan. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Harrison Council. Uh, just a couple quick items for me. Um, first, just a gentle reminder to all of Council about the um, Municipal Elected Officials course for Alberta Emergency. Um, we need to make sure that all of you have it. So I'll be staying on top of this until I know everybody's done it because we're late. So Me too. if you could, that would be great. Um, wanted to let you know, I've had the opportunity to now attend a few chamber um, meetings. Um, I'm always very impressed with the great ideas that they come up with, but just so council's aware, and I will be attending this as well. Um, their AGM is on April 13th at 7 p.m. at the community hall. So if you're available you might want to swing by. Um, also, and I apologize for the lateness, I just got this today, an update on our filming dates confirmed uh, in your package, which is also in the public um, drop box now, I think, too. My Life with the Walter Boyce is a go-ahead. It's a Sony Pictures Netflix production. Um, they will be starting, their, well, they've started preparation already. Um, I'm currently working with Operations and Mural and Ken to solidify the permit, which will be done by the end of the week, as well as uh, um, projected costs for them to have the location shoot here. And then um, we will be confirming some of the dates in your Crossfield schedule um, and making this available to our public uh, through all of our uh, social media and uh, website pages as soon as we can get it up. And then finally, um, um, the last item I'm going to let Meryl speak to this is just in our planning and development engineering, engineering session coming up with council. Thank you. Uh, so just to speak on what Sue just introduced, uh, Sue and I and Lindsay met with um, Urban Systems and MPE today to have a visioning startup meeting uh, that is scheduled for April 26th, um, I think at 6 p.m. So what we're gonna be doing is scheduling one-on-one -on -one sessions with each of you, with the team. Um, this would um, start good dialogue between you and our contracted services and offer you an opportunity to ask any questions. 
Um, the team is aware of the planning and engineering topics. However, they would like to strategize based on your feedback on how to structure the visioning session. So likely there will be a follow-up session and from that an outline will be developed to highlight sequencing of what takes place next. So if there's any questions that you have prior to the one-on-ones and we will let you know the times and ask when you're available. But if there's any questions that you have ahead of time, we just encourage you to share them with us and we'll coordinate that for you. Is there a reason why they're one-on-ones? It's just a preliminary prior to, they wanna have a good understanding of what everybody understands about planning and engineering. So aside from the outline that I had provided council with a couple of weeks ago to um, what you have um, verbalized, what you would not want to discuss and look to change for the future, they just need to have a, a good general understanding of where you're at with planning and development and engineering. And then we go from there. Excellent, thank you. Uh, look forward to that opportunity. Perfect. Yeah. Any questions for Meryl? Through the chair. Deputy Mayor. Um, so our one-on-ones is, is really based on what you'd sent us prior. Like we're gonna just go through that. And, and, and if we wanna add anything or, or, or modify the schedule or, or ask for a modification of the schedule or. So they, they have the outline. They've been provided with the outline of topics. But if you have any planning and engineering questions in general before okay. you speak with them, okay. then they have a better understanding on how they begin. Okay. Because not everybody is at the same level of understanding where we are with planning and engineering. So it could be that we have to do a planning engineer 101. Fair enough. Thank you. No, that's what Probably I was looking for. Probably a good idea. Yeah. Yep. That's what we talked about today. We think that's a good first step. So there likely will be a follow-up session or two. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Mary. I like it. Yes, yeah. very good idea. Anyone else? Okay. If nothing else, can I get a motion to accept administrative update for information? Um, Councilor Knight. <laughs> to accept the administrative update as information. All in favor. Aye. Motion carried. Text. Upcoming events and programs, April 9th, Easter extravaganza, April 29th, driving movie event, uh, more follow. Um, do we take a, do we make the motion now or take a break? Or do we take a break and then make the motion to the go motion on camera? For what? To go on camera. Oh, you um, indicate you're going in camera to close session and then um, call the regular meeting. Okay. Thank you. Can I get a motion to go into closed session? I'll make that motion to uh, to go into closed session. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 